Hello, scaredy cats. Welcome to Jump Scare, the show where I bring you into the frightening world of horror. And this week, I am the Invisible Woman. George Wells, born September 21st, 1866, became the father of science fiction. But how did he acquire this title? Let's hop into the time machine for a look back into the life of H.G. Wells. Growing up, Wells' family was always on the cusp of poverty. He worked odd jobs before opportunities smiled upon him. At 18, he received a scholarship to study biology at the Normal School, where T.H. Huxley, grandfather of Aldous Huxley, a science fiction author of the future sci-fi favorite Brave New World, by the way, was one of his professors. He continued his education at London University, where he graduated in 1888, and afterwards, of course, he became a science teacher. He first, his first published book was The Educational Textbook of Biology, published in 1893, and soon in 1895, his first fictional novel, The Time Machine, propelled him into pop culture memory. His stories were published in quick succession with The Wonderful Visit in 1895, Island of Dr. Moreau 1896, The Invisible Man 1897, and The War of the World 1898. He, at a point in time, was believed to be a prophet of the future, as his story, The War in the Air, predicted military use of aircraft. Men Like Gods from 1923 predicted the world of cell phones, emails, basically wireless communication taking over, becoming very important. Even genetic engineering, of course, Island of Dr. Moreau, and of course, lasers, like in War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds caused panic, well, more like chaos, in 1938 during its live Halloween reading on the CBS station for the Mercury Theater in the Air anthology series. With Orson Welles' dramatic voice and interrupting news bulletins, the public believed the terrifying story of an actual Martian invasion. His later works no longer focused solely on the science fiction genre. It delved into stories about lower class life and stories that reflected his own experiences of his childhood. Works including Love and Mr. Lewisham from 1900, Kips, The Story of a Simple Soul from 1905, and Tono Bungay from 1909. Regardless of genre, H.G. Wells' writing reflected his concern for man, society, where it was going. He expressed his worries over Western society. Many of his views were somber and pessimistic, but others, especially his early works, were very hopeful. Some in that humanity would evolve especially in his works A Modern Utopia from 1905 and Mankind in the Making in 1903. Later books reverted back to utopianism, like his later sci-fi novel Star Begotten from 1937. But over the years, his outlook turned steadily more and more pessimistic. He valued social progress. Unfortunately, the horrors of World War I shook his faith in progress, but he modified his views, believing that man could only progress if he could adapt himself to changing circumstances through knowledge and education, pushing him to write, of course, even more educational books, like The Outline of History from 1920 or The Science of Life from 1931. When World War II emerged, Wells lost all confidence, which was reflected in his final book, End of Its Tether from 1945. It was only 34 pages long, and the story focused on nature destroying mankind. And of course, well, in the, a more advanced species replacing humanity. His works of literature are still relevant to our society and culture today, especially with the progression of modern technology, some of which were believed to be predicted. His stories still capture the public's imagination. He was even nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1921, 1932, 1935, and 1946. And he even inspired the creation of the H.G. Wells Society, a group that promotes, of course, many of Wells' political ideals and, of course, has collected many of his works, keeping his legacy alive. The society was founded by the late Dr. John Hammond. Wells has inspired countless, countless writers and artists, including the well-known Arthur C. Clarke. 
Well, that's it for this week's Jump Scare. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite H.G. Wells book is or short story. Till next time, stay spooky, my fiends. To Utopia. <laughs> it went fast. <laughs> Technology. It, Wells would be like, wow. Kind of taking back what it's, what's it? What it is it? What it owns, nature, you know? And of course, an advanced species replacing humanity. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. I had a, I had a thought and it went. Right here.